everybody. Today I'm going to show you how I do a spherical cake. The first thing is to grease your pans and I like to use Spectrum Organic Shortening. That specific brand works the best for pan release. I just spread it on with a silicone pastry brush and then um, dump a little bit of flour in and tap it around and dump it out carefully and that just works great and is the least messy way I've ever been able to um, figure out a pan release method. So for each sphere, you obviously need two halves, and I love to use silicone pans for um, ha these half domes, and then one layer in the same diameter that your finished sphere will be. So once they're baked and cooled, you just turn them out, wash and dry your pans, line them with saran, and cut each dome in half, and lay the bottom part upside down in the pan like that. So just put a layer of filling on top of that, sandwich the second part on top, cut the extra layer in half, and just continue with the sandwiching process. You just want to fill the half dome pans up to the top. Once you're done, wrap them up really well with saran and chill them for several hours. I like to do it overnight. Now here, I've turned out the really well chilled half out onto a cake board and I've given it a crumb coat and then chilled it again. So this is my second layer of frosting that I'm really just messily slathering on because you kind of need a lot on there, then smoothing is easier. What I use for smoothing is a flexible cutting mat that I got at the dollar store of all places. And I just cut off a little rectangle in a minute here you'll see. Um, it's just a size that fits nicely in my hand and the plastic is flexible, also firm, so you can mold it to the shape of the cake. See right there, I'm just lightly scraping it and I'm bending it to the exact shape of the curve and it is so much easier than trying to use a flat knife. When you're done and it's as smooth as you want it to be, chill it again very well. Now for assembly. This one is a seven inch diameter and that's about as big as I would go without having Rice Krispie or styrofoam on the bottom of the cake. But I like to do all cake if I can and with this size, it's fine. I made a little error here, which is I did not factor in the width of the cardboard. I wanted to put a little bit of support just in case to be safe and it actually ended up making my cake just that slightest bit too tall which really makes a difference when you're looking for perfect symmetry. So I put in my boba tea straw and my cardboard for support and you'll see that I'm gonna have to compensate for the extra height at the end which is actually not that big of a deal. Once your support's in place, just set the other half on top like a lid. And now you can just start the process of spreading buttercream over the equator and smoothing it out. And you'll want to do probably that a couple times. Another little side note, you can see that it's wobbling kind of crazily. And if you don't want to deal with that, all you need to do is glue a few cardboard cake circles together and set the cake on that and then you can hammer a sharpened dowel through the cake um, and that will then you can hold it steady. You'll see I do that in the next step for when I'm fondanting, but you can do it earlier in the earlier stage. Mm -hmm. 
one thing to keep in mind during this stage is that you're basically trying to fatten the ball up a little bit around that equator. Since I, only if you do what I did with the cardboard, which is my mistake, but in case you do that, what I should have done is made the halves a tiny bit shorter and not, um, I should not have filled the pans all the way to the tippy top in order to make space for the cardboard. Since I didn't do that, you need to add frosting. You don't wanna do it all over the whole ball, if that makes sense, to make it even. You're trying to add bulk around the sides um, so that he looks like a chubby little ball and not like a tall oval. Okay, now for fondant. So this process takes patience, but it's so rewarding and looks so great when it's done. It's very worth it and it's kind of fun. So you can see that I hammered in my dowel into my presentation board, which is covered with fondant. This is gonna be a golf ball eventually. And that dowel gives me kind of a handle to hang on to while I'm working with my fondant. So roll out the fondant pretty thin, carefully lay it over the ball, and you can see I'm just smoothing it down very gently. You just want to pull the pleats so carefully because once you get to the point where you're tucking the fondant under the under curve of the ball, that's where it wants to tear. So you just have to really watch that. So you can see here is where it starts to get really ginger as far as the pleats go. You don't want to pull them down. I'm sort of holding them up while my other hand tries to flatten them. I'm not pulling them out, I'm just holding them up. Otherwise the fondant is really going to want to tear as you start to um, reach the under the curve. So just very carefully going along. and. As you get lower and lower, probably some pleats are gonna form that are not gonna wanna flatten just because of the geometry of it all. And so that's where your clean scissor comes in handy. You can just actually pinch them together and cut them with the scissor and then rub the seam out with your fingers. It actually works really well. And this is also a good stage right here to trim away the extra fondant that just makes it much easier as you're getting to where you're going to be tucking it under. Mm -hmm. 
Now here's where I'm forming my first sort of pleat that I pinched together and you can kind of see I'm just carefully trying to ease the fondant down. You want as few seams as possible because each one, there I'm doing one again, each one does take a little bit extra time to sort of buff out as much as you can, but they really are unavoidable. But just carefully, carefully, not dragging down on the fondant, trying your hardest to be pushing in rather than down will prevent tearing. And as I move around and start to complete sections, I like to trim with my palette knife like that and I use a little wooden clay knife. Um, it works beautifully for pushing in the fondant and trying to make the bottom of the ball as defined as possible. Okay, so we've got pretty much a ball shape. I'm pretty happy. And my favorite way to really buff out any little dents and um, really you can get a good smooth finish on the little seams. And I think that the sugar in the fondant polishes the sugar in the fondant. So you just take a, like a ball of fondant and kind of make it into a pad. It was really sticky and humid in my studio this day. So I had to keep dusting it with cornstarch, but with a cornstarch dusted little pad of fondant, very gently in circular motions, just rub all along and um, it really buffs out little, any kind of little dents and marks. I spent a lot of time on this one doing that. Um, because I really, since it's going to be a golf ball, I really wanted it to be as perfect and shiny a uh, finish as possible. And we're just about there. I really hope this will encourage you guys to try your own ball cake. Thanks so much for watching.